On this episode of Scars and Sea Stories, Mike is joined by guest host Jeremy Paris of the Veteran Resource Podcast. We also have our guest William Tate, who is a former Special Forces officer, uh, turned businessman, Wall Street type, then went out to Silicon Valley, wound up having a few life-changing moments, moved to Ukraine in the middle of all of the chaos that was happening out there, bounced back over here now focused in a, in a holy entrepreneurship uh, community. And shameless plug, we're working together on a company here and uh, and representing Blazon Tech on this episode of Cigars and Sea Stories. So William Tate, Special Forces Officer, all the way through this crazy journey to now doing motorized weapon cleaning systems. This is going to be a good one. So without further ado... Thank you, Mr. William Tate, for joining us on an episode of Cigars and Sea Stories. How you doing, bro? Michael, you're very kind. Happy to be here. Yeah, man. Jeremy, we got you? I'm here. I'm here. Nice. I'm excited for this episode. Yeah. He's a good one. I like William. He's good people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Michael. I feel your love. Yeah, man. So tell us now. You're in Durham. We met through Bunker Labs. What, what are you up to? Why are you in Durham? Uh, it's, it's a long, strange journey, uh, you know, either because of uh, military or business, you know, you, you tend to do a good bit of globe trotting. And after uh, work, travel and living in about 80 plus countries, uh, we um, I I landed in uh, Kiev, Ukraine, after I saw the Orange Revolution on TV. It was literally a life changing experience. I was out at Silicon Valley, San Mateo, California, to be specific. And on CNN, you know, they cover all the stuff on the planet that's going on. I saw these big crowds in the middle of Kiev with their uh, orange banners chanting Yershenko, Yershenko, Yershenko. And I started to pay attention to that. And next thing you know, that was in uh, November, December of 2004. I took a uh, month long tour, um, six weeks, uh, August, uh, July, August of 2005. Toured all over Ukraine, and it changed my life forever. I came back to Silicon Valley. I sold my business to my partners, my financial planning management partners, and I moved to Kiev. And I lived there for 10 years until I found out about the Durham's uh, Groundwork Labs program for startups. So it also the Startup Factory, which is now um, defunct. But uh, great startup opportunities in Durham, North Carolina. I knew about the opportunities in Silicon Valley. I was part of that for a long time. But uh, my Ukrainian wife and I uh, decided that uh, if we we're going to move back to the States, we would uh, pick a spot that had a entrepreneurial community. And uh, we were accepted into the Groundwork Labs program, a part of the North Carolina business development. And we came in January. We interviewed over Skype. We were from the middle of Ukraine. We had not been to the Triangle, not been to Durham, didn't know anything about it. And we interviewed over Skype, got accepted to the program, moved here in January of 14. The Russians attacked Ukraine in the south and Crimea and in the east in Donbass. Uh, and we left in March. So uh, Mr. Putin and his Russian jackbooted thugs were very disruptive for our startup. Right. But uh, aside from that, um, you know, we're, we're happy to be here in Durham. It's, it's coming up on three years. That's, that's wow. just now. OK. There's a little southern twang in that voice. Where are you originally from? Well, you might say that I, I'm a southern by the grace of God, but American <laughs> by uh, by uh, passport. <laughs> I, I, I grew up in North Mississippi. I uh, grew up in Tupelo, Mississippi. Myself and Elvis made it famous. Thank you very much. Nice. <laughs> Went to Ole Miss, hotty toddy, go Rebels, um, except uh, for the NCAA investigations that will never stop against uh, our football program. Uh, we usually do pretty well. We don't win every ball game, but we never lost a party. <laughs> okay, so how'd you, how did you come into the military? Because I find this very interesting. All right. Uh, here's what happened. I, uh, my dad was Navy, just, you know, did uh, around Korean time, but he wasn't in Korea. He was playing football, literally, in Guam for the uh, Guana Flyers. And his job was to support the aviation there and play football and hop around the islands. And I thought that was a pretty good gig. He did three years and out. 
my grandfather was a Marine Corps guy. Well, you like that. Mm. Uh, who, who was um, Paris Island and then went over to um, the American Expeditionary Forces uh, in 1917. Um, you know, he was uh, somewhere fighting um, in, you know, in northern France there. And I thought, okay, well, there's a military tradition in my family. I will uh, decide that I want to do something. I don't know. And then, and then um, there was this big tornado, uh, hurricane, something, uh, the natural disaster in, in around uh, middle of Louisiana about my birthday when I turned 17. And uh, I saw all these National Guard troops, uh, you know, in their big trucks, uh, wading through floodwaters, collecting up civilians and passing out food and water. And I thought, well, I like to help people. That's what I'll do. So I literally, uh, in Tupelo, Mississippi, joined the local Army National Guard. As soon as I turned 17, my parents signed. And I guess they weren't surprised uh, because I'd been talking about uh, service and helping people and joining the military at some point. They just didn't think it'd be when I was still a junior in high school. So right. I signed up. I, I, you know, I did the, the reserve guard uh, weekend drills. And then I went to Fort Dix, New Jersey. I was still 17. I went up there as uh, I had not known a woman. I was still a virgin. Can you imagine? <laughs> so <Wow. laughs> literally, At yeah, Fort you Dix, know, huh? you, you, well, you know, but, but <laughs> mom, you know, it, you know, we, we weren't Southern Baptists, but we were, you know, fairly observant of our Presbyterian Methodist upbringing. And so, you know, I, I had some limits on dating and particularly when mother knew all the mother, mothers of all the girls that I tried to date in Lee County, Mississippi. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> that was fairly limited. So anyway, went up to Fort Dix, uh, you know, learned the army way, uh, split training, came back, uh, shaved uh, head <laughs> and who, uh, but I was a PFC because I, at 17 went around recruiting, uh, you know, stripes for buddies. So I went up there, uh, and, uh, I got, you know, I was, I was kind of, kind of a big guy. I was six, three, about two twenty, and, you know, worked out all the time. So they made me a squad leader because, you know, I was tall and big, and, and but I was only 17, and uh, I was a PFC, so it made the ranks look good. Then finished up my senior year, um, I was actually tapped uh, to go to Washington and serve as a house page, so that was kind of interesting. Um, I, I didn't let school and get in the way of my education, hanging out on Capitol Hill. Love that line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, somewhere along the way, I... I, I uh, changed, you know, mother didn't know all those, uh, mothers up there, you know, so I had an opportunity to excel in all kinds of ways, learned all kinds of things up on Capitol Hill. Just came back <laughs> after my senior year, uh, went off to advanced uh, training at uh, Fort Jackson for the summer. And then, uh, because I had, uh, you know, had my basic AIT behind me, I went straight into the advanced ROTC program at Ole Miss, who, uh, Commissioned uh, at the end of my sophomore year, but in between my freshman and June, in yeah, freshman and sophomore years, uh, went to the advanced tra camp, whatever it is in Fort Riley, but also to jump school at Fort Benning as a cadet. So you know, I was airborne, and uh, when I became a second lieutenant, uh, I was recruited into the local Army National Guard Special Forces unit as a shaved tail, brand new, didn't know anything about anything, uh, second lieutenant. And they made me a team XO on a Special Forces A team. And then uh, I went off to uh, Benning for uh, infantry officer school and then Bragg for the Q course and did all this training and UA and stuff and learned about Army life, learned uh, how to be a good lieutenant and um, trying to be all I can be. So that's my uh, short path of uh, early um, I was 20. I, I was out literally at the Q course, uh, out at Fort Bragg, Camp McCall, out in the sticks. And my birthday's on 5 December. And that was the isolation survival exercise. So you got a chicken or a rabbit. And I was in the chicken line. So I got a chicken. I named him Mr. Christmas. And on the third <laughs> day, it was my birthday. And I said, well, Mr. Christmas, here's the deal. It's my birthday. We're going to have a birthday meal and you're invited. That's the good news. The bad news is you're the meal. So <laughs> I, uh, I I took care of the chicken. I cooked him, and it was the best birthday uh, at age 20 that uh, I can remember. So there I was. 17 joined, 18 uh, 
I went to D.C., learned a bunch of stuff. 19, jump school, uh, 19, special forces, uh, 20, uh, you know, finished up everything. And then by the time I was 21, you know, I was who are ready to go. Wow. Nice. We, have, we have so much in common. Let me tell you. I did, sp- I did split training also. I was uh, reserves, not National Guard, when I first went in. Mm-hmm. And I went to, it was 1990, I went to uh, Fort Dix for basic training when I was 17. Wow. And the next year I went to Fort Jackson for AIT. Wow. And uh, I actually went, tried to go later in my career uh, through special forces. I got two weeks into the three weeks for SFAS. And uh, then I was pissing blood like cranberry juice and said, nope, I'm, I'm done. Uh, well, but, uh, hurts. yeah, a lot of, a lot of similarities there. Yeah. How about that? Well, it was. Hell yes. See, that was inadvertent. I had no idea that was going to happen. Bam. Cigars and Sea Stories. <laughs> Subscribe now. Rate. Review. <laughs> I mean, five stars, preferably. <laughs> <laughs> shameless plug oh. opportunity. Ooh, ooh, wow. Well, then no, it's, that's not, great. it's not shameless when it's your own show. It's just a plug. Well, but, well Jeremy, uh, curious. So did you did you go officer path or enlisted path or what was the path? Enlisted. I was uh, personnel. Okay. Um, by hotel. Yeah. Well, um, Michael cuts me some slack because my first 18 months in the Army, I was, you know, I was enlisted. I was got to PFC, got to Spec 4, and then I was in the S&P program, which means you're an E5. But um, I think you get paid for drills, but that, that doesn't count towards your time. But then mm-hmm. fast forward all this stuff, um, I... Uh, I don't want to date myself too much, but I joined under the Carter administration and I got out under the Clinton administration because I remember Bill saying, you know, amongst <laughs> other things, well, I don't think we need all them army forces all over the planet. You know, that we, we can just bring them <laughs> folks home and we can save some money and we can spend it on health care or something like that, that uh, my, my, my dear sweet Hillary, I'm going to put her in charge of doing <laughs> As long as I keep her out of the White House, you know, I, I can have a little party up in here. Woo-hoo. So the forces excellent. reduction. Thank you very much. Uh, now you listen to me. I'm gonna say this again. I did not. I did not tell the truth. Not one time. I can't do it. If my mouth is moving, I'm lying through my teeth. <laughs> See, but I, dig- but I digress forgive me so anyway forces reduction act of 94 uh, so i got my early out uh, in i think 95 but i got the over 15 mm. but under 20 letter to say um you know you've you've uh, served well no back no black marks uh you've been all you can be and you if you because your unit's going away literally uh if you don't find a new home or if you don't want to find a new home you can um, you can take the early out, and my financial career was taken off. I selfless plug. I was the number one guy in my class in terms of assets, uh, production, and new accounts. So I just figured out a system. I'm a systems guy. So same thing in the military. I'm a systems guy. So I'm trying to figure out whatever system works best and apply it. So anyway, that yeah. was my uh, that was my path. Uh, Seventy nine to to um, uh, eighty no ninety. 90, 96, 95, where, where it was. Yeah, I got a piece of paper that says I'm good to go. <laughs> so one of the things that William and I immediately connected on is our advisor background. And it's just because mm. we've been we've been working together as sort of in the background on uh, Bunker Labs and setting up and kind of branching out through liaison officers. I'm using, I'm using air quotes here. But the whole point being is it's just fellow veterans that are in key locations across the state in order to kind of bridge the network, right? And William being one of those key components and uh, being able to talk advisor, you know, lingo and stuff about business is nice. Um, And it's something that we use. I mean, we just kind of jive and talk in some sort of military lingo, as you can tell. And uh, it, it's something that I was immediately kind of like drawn to as service in working with William. And now, 
you know, we're working more closely together with this Blazon Tech project, which was brought in by Benjamin Bondar. We'll have him on for another episode later on. But tell us about Blazon Tech, William. Like this is this is kind of a cool story how we how we kind of orbited around this. Well, yes, Blazon Tech is indeed a, another uh, burgeoning Bunker Labs RDU. Um, company that is in the late stage development. In other words, Benjamin has done all the hard lifting. He's developed this motorized weapons cleaning system that is uh, starts with a handheld drill, essentially, that has a, a custom-tailored high-speed 300 RPM motor that he put together that has rare earth metals, and it's the most powerful small engine that you could put in a compact handheld device. And then he created these uh, nylon uh, hardened brushes that are specifically designed for high-speed rotation. Mm -hmm. And then custom-tailored cotton socks that go over the brush. So it's really a – it's the combination of modern weapons cleaning, gun cleaning firearms – maintenance, modernization, and automation, because uh, essentially firearm, dirty gun, I mean, guns get dirty when you shoot them. you got all this carbon buildup, you got grime and stuff from the elements. But uh, before, you'd have to disassemble the weapon, you'd have to break out uh, steel, in most cases, cleaning rods and brushes, and you know all these swabs and stuff like that. And it was laborious, it take, took a lot of time, you had to find a clean suitable place to break the weapon down so you couldn't do it in the field very well. So now Benjamin has decided there's got to be a better way for, you know, since World War II and beyond, uh, weapons cleaning has been that way. So now it's this motorized device that is pocket sized. You can whip it out. You can interchange the brushes based on the type of weapon, pistol, rifle, and the caliber of those and custom fit it with the brushes and socks and turn it on. Uh, the, turn the motor on, the brushes start spinning, turn the light on, you've got a powerful light so you can see what you're cleaning up and where the grime is, mm -hmm. and stick it in there, rotate it a little bit, and within a few seconds, literally, it's cleaned up, you break in all the carbon loose, you stick the sock, sock on, you put a little brake free or a CLP on there, and you stick it back in, and it absorbs up all the loose carbon, and you're fit to fight and will to win, good to go with a clean weapon uh, in under a minute. And wow. It, yeah. And it works. Yeah. You know, it it's works just, <laughs> it's one of these I, things. Well, I told Ben, I was like, dude, I, can I get one of these so that I can try it out? Yeah, absolutely. Here you go, man. No problem. When I unzipped that thing, got into it and started like screwing on brushes and trying it on all of my different guns and stuff. I, yeah. I was sold because it punches out the chamber. Yeah. But then when you switch it to a nine mil, you can clean your entire pistol. So, yeah. What's amazing is that it's taken this long for somebody to come up with this. Right? Well, that's it. You know, it was born, uh, he did foot patrol in Iraq, in Iraq back in 2009. And, and he thought about it, basic training. You know, when you come off the range, you've got all this, you know, dirty, dirty, rif dirty weapons, dirty rifles everywhere. And troops are all breaking them down and they're shoving all kind of stuff in there and putting all kind of solvents and stuff that are not good for the weapon. They're going to break it down and degrade it. And he thought, okay, I'm a systems guy. I'm a smart guy, an engineer guy. I will come up with some kind of modernized, automated weapon uh, or a motorized way to clean up the weapon quickly, effectively, and without damaging it. And that's what he did. So the idea came to him, I think, on the back of a sea ration box off this foot patrol somewhere in uh, Iraq in 2009. And that's when he combined a pretty high-speed engineer development team put it all together, and it's got it past the first 1,000-plus units. So the R&D stage has done, and there's this tremendous demand for it now. Uh, and he came from Charlotte uh, to Bunker Labs. I think uh, Michael or Dean, the executive officer at uh, Bunker Labs RDU, invited him or he got on a newsletter somehow. And he came, and uh, he's kind of a quiet, soft-spoken guy. And we looked at the tool, we looked at him and decided, uh, okay, we think we can help with this, the next stage, the production stage. 
And so we, we got together and we, we had some coffees, we had some meals. As it turns out, here's the irony about how Benjamin and I are related. I moved to Ukraine, lived there for 10 years. Um, we just had, my wife and I just had our son. He's almost seven months now. This is the first summer that we haven't summered for at least five months in Ukraine, in the middle of Ukraine, near Alexandria and Krovograd. But uh, Benjamin was born in a Soviet Russian occupied Ukraine, which is now the Crimea. So that part that, uh, that juts out into the Black Sea, mm-hmm. that uh, the Russians took over literally with 75,000 uh, jack booted, booted, green, little green men from wherever. They didn't have any Russian uniforms on, but everybody knew that Putin had deployed them to ensure that uh, the conquered people of, of Ukraine uh, voted to join uh, the Russian territory. You know, at bayonet point, you are uh, obligated to do all kind of things. But right. uh, in any case, mm-hmm. I, I digress. So he was born in that. Um, his parents, his father particularly, was uh, uh, persecuted by the Soviet government for his Christian religious beliefs, and he got a refugee opportunity to come to the U.S. I think they moved to California, and I think he was born there or in Washington State, but somewhere on the West Coast, and then um, that's where most of his development team for Blazon Tech was, and then he moved to Charlotte. Um, I'm not clear why, but uh, then he came over to our um, RDU area for a few bunker labs meetings. And then he and I just hit it off because I'm Ukrainian. My spirit is Ukrainian. My Ukrainian green card where I'm a permanent resident is Ukrainian. Pretty much everything about me is Ukrainian except for my American passport. Mm-hmm. And again, Southern mm-hmm. by the grace of God. So the, the other thing that we have in common is his wife is Ukrainian. He met her here in U.S. She's naturalized. He's uh, naturalized. Uh, he has uh, two young children, and his boy is, I think, 18 months, James, James Bondar, uh, colorful name. <laughs> and then my son, Andrew, is uh, almost seven months, and he's uh, you know, born in Durham, but uh, he's at least half Ukraine, Ukrainian. So uh, we have all these additional uh, connections yeah. With uh, Benjamin uh, at uh, Blazon Tech, and, uh, and I'm the CFO. I'm the de facto COO because I'm a systems guy to get to this whole ma- management, uh, you know, done properly and in the right system. And um, I've been taking uh, CEO operational stuff off of his plate and getting that done as best I can. So Benjamin and I are full time, and uh, Michael is helping us with. Uh, other of his expertise, and we're just glad to have a, an all-veteran team that's based in North Carolina, and most of us based in the uh, Triangle area here for RTP. Yeah, and if you guys who are listening, really cool. wanna, if you want to check it out, it's at wefunder.com forward slash blazentech, wefunder.com forward slash blazentech, blazentech's B-L-A-Z-N is in November, and then tech. B L A Z N is in November and then tech. So check that out at wefunder.com forward slash blazing tech. If you want to see the video, see the product in action, all of that other good stuff. So yeah, it's a pretty cool team. I mean, this whole, this whole backstory and how it's working out and stuff like that. It's fun. It's a good project to be a part of. That's right. Oh, and by the way, uh, Michael is, uh, I'm the latest member to the daddy club. It's my first, uh, son and he's uh, seven months. I, again, a little bit of a late starter here, but uh, Michael has uh, lots of kids. I think he's four. 25, but, 30. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, right. I, I, but right. I, I can I can speak to the latest child, which I think is, what, a week, 10 days, something like that? Two your weeks, daughter? So. Two weeks, yeah. K- kudos wow. to you for Thanks. your new lovely daughter. I appreciate it. Yeah. She is awesome. Yes, no doubt. So when I when I first uh, had uh, my um, Andrew, our, our son, um, I was telling uh, Benjamin, uh, no, not Benjamin, but Michael about uh, you know my experience thus far with my pregnant wife, and, and he said, "Well, here's the deal: when he when he comes out, you're not going to get much rest, and you're just going to be functionally." Uh, being able to do your daily business or whatever it is you did. So for a long time, it was, Michael said, 
gosh, I hope nobody asks me anything important, you know, because my cognitive <laughs> uh, capacity <laughs> is limited. And I get it. I absolutely get it. And for months, I was like, oh, gosh, you know, I better start writing things down like my birthday and my social that's somewhere in my brain. I just can't get it out when I need it. So I'm a little past <laughs> that now, but I, I'm sure Michael's right back into that is my point. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, it, that nice frustration point, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's more like, uh, you know how you you get done with duty and your eyes are just kind of sunk back in your head and you yeah. know, you're just like, oh, that... It's not that you're awake all night. It's, it's that you got a shitty sleep on a really terrible bed. And you're like, uh, hmm. I'm just not going to be ripe for the day. Like, I'm going to need to pound a cup of coffee after this one, boys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know? I got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Yeah, I've discovered coffee. We were tea drinkers. You know, being Ukrainian, we drink a lot of tea. But uh, and, and Galena's breastfeed, and, and bless her heart, she is uh, – you know, no drugs, no hormones, nothing. I mean, she is just the you you Google, and I'm sure there's a lot of great moms out there, uh, Michael, to include your uh, wife Heather. But to me, Galena is that quintessential. If you Google perfect mom, there's her picture because she is Johnny on the spot for our son Andrew. And my point is, is she won't drink coffee now because it's got caffeine in it, and caffeine right. could go through her breasts. And, and I'm like, okay, honey, I don't suffer that. Give me the coffee. You know, I'll drink it for you. <laughs> right. So I'll yes. take that bullet, sweetie. Yeah, that's right. We're there. Right? It's a team right. effort. I'm taking that one for the team. Yep. Yeah, I'm to the point now where I'm drinking coffee at night, sometimes like, you know, half hour before I go to bed. Right. <laughs> right. It's just my everyday, all day drink now. <laughs> So, Jeremy, you got young kids, too? I, I didn't mean to, you know, box you out there. No, that's okay. I've got one old, one one younger. So my son is 20. He's at Michigan Tech uh, wow. studying to be a video game programmer. Smart guy. Wow. And then my daughter is seven. And uh, and she's quite the handful. She's no really awesome. Really that's awesome. So good for you. Well, again, you and Michael have this Michigan connection here. Um, I'm sure – Michael, if he yep. hasn't told you that, you know, he, he's from that part of the planet. But uh, if you look at him, when we first met, I'm a military historian and I studied the war for Southern independence, often mistitled as the <laughs> Civil War. I mean, there's not much civil about it. And we weren't trying, the Confederates weren't trying to take over the government. They just wanted their own country. So, you know, but slavery was wrong. And I, I agree that slavery was wrong. I don't like, you know, slavery anywhere. So I'm, I'm, I don't want to get into that. But my point is, is when I looked at Michael, I said, you know what? Joshua Chamberlain, Colonel 20th Maine, Googling, that's what you look like to me. So there you go. <laughs> little, little, the char, the band. Civil charge. War, it's the beard. It's the yeah, beard, it's I think. The right? beard, the beard and the, and the eyes and the whole thing. So that's it. Uh, 20th Maine commander, Colonel Joshua Chamberlain, uh, at the, the bayonet charge at, <laughs> at little round top, look it up. That's you. That's your, that's your, uh, name to fame. Nice. Nice. <laughs> wow. That's a badass mustache. Look at <laughs> that. Oh and man. Yeah. He was played by Jeff Daniels at one point. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It. That's right. That's Fellow right. Michigander. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Jeff Daniels. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is a serious mustache. That man's in charge <laughs> of something. Look at that. <laughs> He was a, I think, a Presbyterian minister and had to go on sabbatical to uh, to join the military, to join the Union Army. So, there you go. Very interesting stories there on all sides, soldiers. I mean, it, you know, it's the case all over the planet. We are the one percenters. We are the ones that are protecting our way of life in here here in the U.S. And we have this secret sort of band of brothers mindset behavior. And we don't need, as General Mathis says, a lot of this cuddling. I mean, there's some serious troops that have some problems, and I get that, physical, mental, emotional. But the rest of us are, are good to go. And so we, we sh we're we leading from the front. And good on us for doing that. And I, and I hope yep. more people will follow in our path. Well, that's the thing is, you know, uh, got your six in, in Team Red, White, and Blue and different organizations like that. Uh, they're really highlighting that as well, that, you know, we as veterans, we're, we're not broken. We are leaders in the community. 
you know, give us an opportunity to do that, to, to lead in the community. And we will, you know, change what's going on in that community for the better. Mm-hmm. Well, that's it. And thank goodness for Bunker Labs and the leadership here with Dean and Michael doing their thing. Um, it, it, I think, I mean, I don't know, but Bunker Labs is based in Chicago and they've got half a dozen or a dozen chapters all over the U.S. Michael, you know this better. But I think the RDU chapter is the leader in terms of just leaning forward in the foxhole, uh, companies participating, and, uh, you know, I'm just happy to be part of it. I, I, I was looking for that. I was sort of um, surrounded by, now I'm not dissing anybody, but sort of tech geeks here in the American Underground, the American Tobacco Campus, where a lot of the startup companies are. Not a lot of veterans, but a lot of geeks. And I'm not a tech guy. I'm, I'm a financial guy. I'm a systems business guy. So I am glad to get with Michael and others so we can sort of relax and do the secret military, hey, brother, we serve together, handshake and bond right. in such a way. And even my wife says, you know, you, you're really you're happier being here because you found a group of folks that you can hang out with. And now with Blazing Tech, um, we went out to SHOT Show a couple of weeks ago in Las Vegas, and there were folks from all over the place, not all of a military, but a significant portion of military. And we were just glad to, to shake hands and have that com- camaraderie again. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because you bring up Bunker Labs and specifically like each chapter just does different things. We all have a specific charter. It's just we kind of pull our levers and, and maneuver our pieces in different ways as far as the template that is given from headquarters. What we pride ourselves in is brain trust. We really enjoy bringing together the overall community through Bunker Brain Trust. And we have 26 of them are slotted for this year. Uh, I'm putting together the calendar right now. Yay. And uh, and so, yeah, it's every other Thursday we meet. And what I love about it is that it's everybody. It's not just veterans. It's business leaders who want to engage with us as well. And we've seen success come out of that. Um, so, you know, that that makes us different. Um, but it's also it's fantastic because we've been able to come together with folks, you know, that are doing great things on main street with their businesses and they're just doing it in a different way. Like Pete Phipps comes to mind. He's a barber, you know, or runs barber shops. He himself not being a barber necessarily, but he runs barber shops and he does it in a unique way. And you can follow him on social media and all of these other different things to see exactly what I mean by that. But, um, it's cool interacting with these different folks who are just taking an outside of the box approach, which is entrepreneurship in general. It's just a lot of us have the stones to follow it through as serves that veteran community. And again, have the ability to support one another, you know, playing off each other's strengths throughout, frankly, the hardship that is the, you know, first, however many, it's going to be two to three years minimum on any business, but that first initial, Oh, am I really an entrepreneur? You know, can you look in the mirror and call yourself an entrepreneur? Um, As soon as you're making money. (laughs) Right. Right. Exactly. Well, sales, that's right. And sales cures all kind of stuff. If you've got any question out there, if you can sell something, people will pay you money for it. That's a good indication you're going to pick up some traction. But let me, let me do a little, uh, oh, by the way, case in point. Uh, There are, as I said, Bunker Labs chapters all over the place. You can go to Bunker Labs O-R-G, and that'll get you the main Chicago. But then ours is Bunker Labs R-D-U O-R-G, and that'll get you to the central North Carolina. Um, but there's chapters all over the place. So anybody listening to the podcast, if they're curious about veterpreneur opportunities and there's a chapter in your area, uh, try and you know find them. And, and the folks in Chicago might be able to help you. But we have uh, this t- timing with Blazing Tech. We're not only because of the Bunker Lab support, uh, but we're going into an area where, uh, through no fault of our own, we're riding this energy wave of the new administration and the new emphasis on uh, rebuilding, modernizing, automating, making smart decisions and choices and purchases from the Pentagon or to the Pentagon, that's the new directive. They just came out and they got signed last Friday, I think it was the 27th or whatever it was, 
to say, we're going to modernize and automate and come up with new tools, resources for our military. So Blazing Tech is well positioned for that to be able to ride that that wave of we're, we're going to get in front of that uh, water, that energy that, of the wave yeah. for business, and not only in personal gun owners, uh, U.S. and globally, but for the new military opportunities. Uh, special ops love them. I mean, we've got uh, C.J. Dugan on the team who was um, – special forces, but he was Delta for many of those years and just retired out. And he's part of our team too. He took us to the folks he knew at SHOT Show and they embraced and you know, led us to some of the contracts that we're going to pick up. And so this energy and the new team that we're building here is a result of Bunker Labs, RDU, and the new administration having an emphasis on uh, getting the Pentagon and our military what we need to be good war fighters and maintain our equipment and update it as it needs to be. Mm. So we're catching this energy. And in addition, there happens to be this new emphasis on crowdfunding where everybody gets to participate in some meaningful way. You get to vote with your dollars, companies, products, services that you like that well, you yeah. think either you want or be meaningful to you presently or down the road. And so Bunker Labs can partner with some of that activity. And so everything is coming together to, to push companies that are veteran years that are sponsored and helped by Bunker Labs and others. Uh, so there's no downside to checking it out. And if you're thinking about going down that entrepreneurial path, there's all kind of resources now, is my point. And if you've got a, uh, an opportunity to ride some of these energy waves that are coming out, crowdfunding, emphasis on military updating, modernization, automation, maintenance, then get in front of that. Get in front of that energy and the wave will push you along so you don't have to paddle hard to catch the next one. Yeah. Well, you had mentioned crowdfunding and specifically if you check out wefunder.com forward slash blazing tech, you can see wefunder is different. It's equity based crowdfunding. So you're actually an investor in the company. There is a potential for ROI. And that's what makes it unique. So there's perks, sure, just oh, wow. like a lot of the other crowdfunding. However, you're getting equity in the company, so it's cool, man. Well, yeah. Michael, to that to that point, uh, we the bunker uh, the uh, Blazing Tech team decided, okay, we're going to offer a minimum of hundred bucks. You can sign up and get a hundred bucks, but at two hundred fifty dollars, our kits, our Blazing Tech motor system kits, retail, and we're sold out on our BlazingTech.com site. At two hundred dollars, and we're oversold and uh, back ordered on that. But if you go to the wefunder.com forward slash blazing tech site for as little as two hundred fifty dollars, you can pick up a kit. You can get a lifetime ten percent discount on any future orders. You're going to need them for brushes and socks and so and, and the you know things that we're going to offer on our website. And it won't be just those things. We're, we've made uh, deals with um, not only Frog Lube but also uh, Bill Geisley at uh, Go Juice, which is the purple stuff that's really uh, everybody loved it at Shot Show. So we've got a lot of opportunities to build on that. You've got a chance. The folks that go to wefunder.com forward slash blazing tech and take advantage of that lifetime ten percent, and then you go to five hundred, you get more perks. You go to a thousand, more perks. I think it's two thousand or twenty five hundred more perks, all the way out to ten thousand dollars. So if you're a dealer. Or if you were a uh, got more money than cents, um, mm -hmm. it's a good investment. So pick yep. it up anywhere from a hundred dollars to ten thousand, and ride this wave, this energy wave with us. This blazing tech uh, path to success. That's very cool. It's a cool time to be alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've never even heard of this WeFunder thing, and and looking at the WeFunder page here, this is really cool. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? I think it's the next. I think it's the guys. I think it's the next generation beyond Kickstarter, Indiegogo, which are sort of early stage. Um, maybe you've got a product, maybe you don't, and this is where you go there to try and get it built. We're beyond that. We're a late stage startup. We've already got a tried and true, tested, sold over a thousand units V1 uh, product. Our V2 is going to have a bunch of upgrades. Um, a circuit board in there, a uh, enhanced uh, motor and gearbox. There'll be some other things that uh, we'll add to this kit. So 
uh, we're, we're beyond the R&D stage. We're ready to, to exploit the opportunities of all the folks that want these kits, gun owners, military, law enforcement, not only in the U.S., but all over the planet. Yep, it's very cool. So, in wrapping things up, folks, if you're interested in Blazing Tech, check it out at wefunder.com forward slash Blazing Tech. Just check out WeFunder in general. I mean, it's it's crowdfunding, but you get equity in the company as well as the perks and other such things. So it allows it's it's more of social entrepreneurship. It's being a part of that which is bigger than yourself, which is especially something that we as veterans can get behind. So I feel that it's very cool. Uh, I thought it was a great pick and a great fit for Blazing Tech to be on WeFunder. So a lot of fun there. Um, Michael, it's a win, it's a win, win, win. It's a win for the investors. It's a win for veterans. It's a win for the businesses that are on there. They're either uh, regular businesses or veteran owned businesses. There's no downside. Everybody wins. Love it. See, there you go. Very cool. Well, Very cool. Well, thanks, brother. I really appreciate you coming on the show, Mr. William Tate of, let's just say, Blazing Tech, Army Vet, you know, all of that other good stuff. Mr. William Tate, I really appreciate it, bro. Jeremy, Michael, thank you so much for the opportunity to excel today. Yes. It was great talking to you. Yep. Ooh-wah, ooh-wah. Ooh-wah. Arr. Arr. All right, guys. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to go bark like that for the next 5 minutes and my wife's going to give me that nice. okay that's enough now. <laughs> <laughs> yes dear that's nice. Uh, I love it. Folks yeah, if you uh, if you haven't already done so subscribe rate and review the podcast I suggest 5 stars. Thank you so much to everybody who's done so on iTunes and all of our Android aggregators that are out there. Right now we're on 16 different destinations that Libsyn broadcasts out to. I think we're on our heart radio already. I know it is SoundCloud, YouTube gets it, and of course, all of our social media. Uh, so go ahead, click play, listen in. We've got loads more coming up in the future. Huge thank you to our sponsors, Spartan Media. That's a Marine 03 owned and operated company that has built our website, veteranslist.us. If you're a small business owner, you can get half off a featured membership by typing in cigars and c that's discount code cigars and c on veteranslist.us and thank you to our uh, podcast network heroes media group veteran owned and operated see how we roll you know you just get it it's i love this hey hey, hey michael real quick uh can we do blazing tech at uh facebook and blazing tech at instagram if folks are interested in learning more there you go. It's just at Blazing Tech. And again, that's Bravo Lima Alpha Zulu November Tango Echo Charlie Hotel. In case Good anybody luck. was, you know, phonetically. Well wondering. played. Well played. You like that? It's a veteran audience. I get away with that shit. <sighs> well, <laughs> chicks dig it. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we cue the music. Flag on to every breeze, from dawn to setting sun.